Well, hello again. I know it's been a while again, but I figured it's about time to finish Who Was Albert Einstein? Should we get to the end of this book? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so we were on chapter seven. Everything is determined, the beginning as well as the end, by forces over which we have no control. It is determined for the insect as well as for the star. Human beings, vegetables, or cosmic dust, we all dance to a mysterious tune, intoned in the distance by an invisible player. Albert Einstein. In 1948, Albert was in very poor health. His heart was getting weaker and weaker. A doctor insisted that Albert take a certain medicine. Albert hesitated. The doctor insisted. So Albert took the medicine and immediately got sick to his stomach. There, he snapped at the doctor. Do you feel better now? Yet there was no reason for happiness during those years. In 1948, the Jewish nation of Israel was created. Albert was overjoyed. All his work had helped to bring about something wonderful. After Israel's first president died, Albert was asked to become the next president. Albert said no. Politics is for the moment, he once wrote, while an equation is for eternity. Still, he was greatly honored by the offer. In 1950, Albert made his will. He wanted all his science papers left to the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. In 1951, Maha died. Now Albert had neither his wife nor sister. He was more alone than ever. He surrounded himself with family photographs. He said, a photograph never grows old. You and I change. People change. And there's another picture. People change all through the months and years. But a photograph always remains the same. Which is true, right? I like, I like photographs though. You can always look back on them. How nice to look at a photograph of a mother or father taken many years ago. You see them as you remember them. That is why I think a photograph can be kind. Several, several years later, after a brief illness, Albert was admitted to the Princeton Hospital. On April 17th, 1955, which April 17th today, he asked that his eyeglasses, some paper, and a pen be brought to his hospital bed. He had work, thinking, to do. The next day, he died, with a sheet of equations next to him. To the very end, Albert was thinking. The last letter he wrote was one that urged all nations to give up nuclear weapons which nowadays we know that there still are nuclear weapons. Oh boy. The Einstein House at 112 Mercer Street in Princeton, New Jersey is treated no differently than any other home in the neighborhood. That's the way Albert wanted it. He worried that if it was turned into a museum, people would concern themselves too much with his memory and not enough with their own future. After Albert's death, the scientific community mourned the loss of a great and original mind. Jews mourned the loss of a leader who always wished for better and more peaceful world, even in the darkest moments of Jewish history. And all people mourn the loss of a unique, peace-loving man. Perhaps Albert said it best. Only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. Albert was not the best husband. He was not the best father, but as a friend said of Albert, he was the freest man I have known. Chapter 8, A Final Thought Albert left these instructions upon his death. Donate my brain to science, cremate my body, and throw the ashes in some secret place. This was done. So where is Albert's brain now? After Albert died, an autopsy was done on his body. In the process, the doctor, Thomas Harvey, removed Albert's brain, studied it, decided that there was nothing all that special about it, and set it aside in a bottle of formal, formal malhide. Formal malhide. I know how to say it. I'm sorry. Formal malhide. Yeah, 
Maybe someone else can like, tell me exactly how to pronounce it again. Hmm. Later, when Dr. Harvey moved to Wichita, Kansas, he took the brain with him. He kept the brain, which was in pieces in two jars inside a cardboard box labeled cider. Since then, further studies of several medical researchers have found Albert's brain to be a bit more interesting than Dr. Harvey did. Dr. Harvey provided the researchers with pieces of the brain. Albert's brain weighed less than the average brain, was 15% wider, and had an unusual set of grooves. Yet, the importance of these differences remains unknown. Harvey kept the brain with him for over 40 years. Over time, Harvey and Michael Paterniti, an, an author, put the brain in the trunk of a car and drove it all the way to California so that a piece of it could be given to Albert's granddaughter, Evelyn. Soon after that trip, Harvey turned the brain over to Princeton Hospital, where it continues to float around in a jar. You have to wonder what Albert would think of that. There's another little picture down there. It's kind of interesting having a brain in a jar. Oh, and then here's another picture. And it says Albert Einstein, 1879 to 1955. All right, now it's the timeline of Albert's life and the timeline of the world. And yes, I will go through that with you as well. So for Albert's uh, timeline, 1879, Albert is born March 14th in Germany. Um, 1881, Albert's sister Maha Mahia is born. 1889, Albert starts high school. Hmm. 1894, Albert's family moves to Italy, leaving him in school in Germany. 1899, Albert decides to become a Swiss citizen. 1900, Albert graduates from college. 1902, Albert was, gets a job at the patent office. 1903, Albert mar marries Melivia Merrick. 1905, Albert introduces his theory of relativity. 1909, Albert becomes a professor at the University of Zurich. 1914, Albert leaves Melivia and his sons and move to Berlin, Germany. Albert must wait to prove his theory of curving light. 1919, Albert marries Elsa. 1921, Albert visits the United States. 1922, Albert wins the Nobel Prize of Phys for Physics. 1931, Albert is declared a spy. Hitler puts out a death warrant for him. 1933, Albert and Elsa move to Princeton, New Jersey. 1936, death of Elsa. 1940, Albert becomes a U.S. citizen. 1948, death of Maliva. 1951, Albert's sister, Maya, dies. 1955, Albert dies on April 18th. Now, the timeline of the world. You ready for this? I am. 1879, Thomas Edison invents the light bulb. 1881, Clara Barton founds the American Red Cross. 1889, the Eiffel Tower is completed in Paris. Vincent van, everyone likes to say go, but when I went to Amsterdam, it was Gok. So Vincent van Gogh paints the starry night. 1894, x-rays are discovered. 1895, and then the first movie is shown in Paris in 1895, which I'm not sure why it says 1894. But anyways, 1899, the first modern Olympics are held in Greece, which is actually in 1896. Again, doesn't make sense, right? 1900, Dr. Sigmund Freud publishes The Interpretation of Dreams. 1902, the first Trianosaurus rex fossil is discovered. That's pretty cool. 1903, the Wright brothers fly the first plane. 1905, the first movie theater opens. 1909, American Robert Perry reaches the North Pole. Wow. 1914. Here we go. 
the Titanic sinks in 1912. The first crossword puzzle appears in the New York newspaper in 1913. And then there's the outbreak of World War I. 1919, World War I ends in 1918. 1921, the first highway opens in Germany. 1922, King Tut's tomb is found. 1931, the Star Spangled Banner becomes the U.S. National Anthem. 1933, Adolf Hitler becomes Chancellor of Germany. 1936, Franklin D. Roosevelt is re-elected president. And the game Monopoly is invented. I'm not a huge fan of Monopoly. I mean, it's kind of fun, but it takes forever. But there is a game, a card game, called Monopoly, can't remember, I'll have to look at it again, but Monopoly something, and it's amazing, it's so much fun. Alright, 1940, Outbreak of World War II, which is in 1939. 1948, World War II ends in 1945, FDR dies and Harry Truman becomes president also in 1945, and the nation of Israel is created. 1951, the phrase rock and roll is used on the radio for the first time, and then I Love Lucy premieres on TV. 1955, Disneyland opens in California. Ha, ah, that is so cool. All right. So now I'll go on to my next book next time. So click and follow and you shall see. Have a great night.